Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Today is June 15th. We are out here with the Corn Warrior slash Podfather film crew with Pivot Bio. It's gonna be a fun day. I'm actually not stuck in a cab, so I get to take you guys around and show you everything that's happening. We just wrapped up with Ohio Agnet. They're, they're a farming news source here for, for Ohio. They have updates via, you know, they have a magazine, a monthly article that's, that's coming out. They have a website with news and video features. They're a great group of guys and they do a lot for the farmers. It's just a scary feeling when you're this good this early, especially after the last five years we've had them at. Normally by this time, we're worn out from just trying to fight keeping the crops head above water. And last but not least, once you corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. Definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back and callous pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old man said you read what you sow. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. Hearing these views of gold. It's hard out here. Always bringing the heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. They call me Cloudboy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. We're coming back a little harder this year. I'm a field right behind me is actual uh, where the new proven next generation is. We came out here to see it, uh, talk about you know the results I've seen from last year, and then talk about what we're seeing so far this year. We're going to be heading out to that part of the field where it's a little more uniform, get some samples out that way and show you a little bit about what proven can do. So I seen you guys walking around uh, doing stand counts. What things look like? Uh, both sides, the untreated and the treated, were right at 39,000. What do you guys think of it so far? I think this field looks amazing. This field looks great. Uh, and I don't know that there's much visible differences that you can see above ground. I would love to see a couple root digs, see if you could see a visible root difference below the ground. Uh, we have a consistent protocol across Pivot Bio. Uh, what we'll do, we'll send these off to a lab and they'll do nitrogen analysis on this along with a wet weight and a dry weight. Jim and I will supply the population and that will allow a calculation for a total nitrogen in the plant per acre after uh, the crop hits R1 and we'll do a whole plant sample at that point uh, to get a better, better analysis of a whole plant. Would you show for the viewers at home what the last colored leaf is? Sure. I get a lot of Absolutely. questions and calls on that. All right. So the way we stage corn, we actually count the actual leaves from the very bottom. The initial, uh, the initial leaf is down here. It's a rounded leaf. That's your first leaf. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth collared leaf. And what you can see by uh, looking at collars, you see this part of the leaf that starts to fan out. You see the collar going around the leaf. You also see the leaf laying out horizontally and starting to droop. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Vegetative stage, we call it V6. And basically what we do to sample is just rip off this collared leaf. We collect 15 of those in each check. On these demo pots, we're asking farmers to cut back a substantial amount of nitrogen. I mean, asking somebody to cut back 35 pounds and trusting that they're gonna replace it with a microbe is a big trust. But we know it can happen. We've proven it in our, uh, in our past trials and everything. That's why we were calling them demonstrations. It's not trials anymore. We know that it works this way. At the end of the day, from a yield standpoint, we're looking for parity or better. If you cut back 35 pounds and you're at parity, that's amazing. But I think, well, honestly, we should even be beyond that. No, for me, you know, there, there's a lot of guys that tissue test every every week. 
and that's fine. If you want to take the time and tissue test it every week, the only thing I would say is tissue test the same area at the same time of day, every day. It's so like for me, I'd always pick Monday at eight o'clock. Why I picked that is beyond me, because I'd be soaked. Walking through 20 inch corn in the morning dews <laughs> was a terrible idea, but that's what I started with, and that's so, kind of made my own bet, so I delay in it. Man. <laughs> so I got some togs and learned how to <laughs> do tissue safely. Uh, we've been using BASF. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe. We're out today looking at a pivot bio field. We're looking at being able to cut back your synthetic nitrogen and being able to replace that in furrow with a micro. Or the starter washed out, the pivot bio corn is still green at the end of the year. We're here today with Frantina Williams, and she's our local rep from BASF. We're gonna talk about Revitech. The fun thing with Revitech is like our products are on steroids, so we have a new molecule in it called methantrifluconazole. Instead of saying that, we've changed that active ingredient name to Revisol. And so all of our products that have Revisol in them contain that, and it's a new molecule that helps with a lot of resistance management, and that way we can help and really get those diseases for the long run of the season. It lasts a little bit longer and works a little bit harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe. definitely gives you a little bit more leeway, so maybe if we have a rainy or wet day like this, you don't have to be in the field the first thing, but also it gives you a little bit of time if you want to do it preparing for the season as well. We used Revitech last year, and we like the longevity of it. We've seen where that holds out. We're not as much in corn, we can kind of outrun the diseases. Well, with beans, on the other hand, we're kind of in the half of the diseases. So we've seen this to be a, a good lasting product. The best recommended use for Revitech is going to be really in between the R2 and R4 timing, and that should last you for the rest of the year. Well, have you seen any benefits in a high yield environment, a damp environment? I mean, we obviously down here in the south, we got a lot of humidity. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any times that you've seen like, well, if we could do it again, or if you had to make another application, is there any time when, when there's certain factors that might limit that, or you think that for the most part, for the most part, it's good to go, but especially if you're thinking about the different uh, differentiation in what's going on in the area, that's where a lot of plant stressors come into play as well, and that's where something that, you know, we've been stressing the plant health message a lot yep. with our fungicides. So outside of disease, even if you think that, you know, it might not be a disease year, there's still a lot of things that can come through, yep. high winds, tornadoes, a lot of rain, anything that can put stress on that plant. And if you want a higher yielding crop, the best thing to do is release some of that stress and our fungicides definitely pull through on that. You know, we talk about ROI and we talk about when to do this or when to do that or to do it or not to do it. And that's always a question, you know, especially, you know, you take somebody that's like my father, you know, like, you sure you need to do that? Well, I'm not really sure of anything, you know. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that it, it always adds to the plant health. Anything that adds to plant health cannot have a negative effect. So when we look at ROI, there's always key components. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, the best ROI would be if we come out here and we made X amount of bushels maybe on no fertility and none of this, you know, if you don't give it a, your best effort, and by this you mean Revitec and your fungicide program, what does ROI really mean? That's the thing we're looking for, you know, is, is a return on our investment. We go off university studies, we go off what Frantina says, but you know, it never hurts on your own farm to do your own data. You know, you've got to check and see what works for you and what works for you in your environment. So we're definitely, as y'all can tell, we're definitely not a pod father. <laughs> this is just this is just one of our beans and it's got some some good branching going on here. See if we can keep the keep the weather right and the good Lord blessing us and we'll uh, 
We'll see what we can make out of this thing. We're doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. Ran the Copperhead Furrow Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. Now, for a lot of guys, you got a lot of ground to cover. You don't need to do weekly tissue tests. I would always highly recommend around that V4 time frame because when are you most going to make that post application? It's around that V5. So that's the one time you get to go out there and you get to affect that crop. V10 is another crucial time. So at that V10 time range, we really want to make sure that we're paying attention to that crop. You know, but on tissue tests, I always want to see you know, I don't want spikes. So when I'm looking at tissue tests, I don't want a roller coaster ride. My goal is, is to have it good and then keep it. If I can just keep my levels across the board even, you know, and feed in each different nutrients, that's when I know I'm gonna have a good crop. If I start looking like a heart rate monitor, I know I'm in trouble because that plant is stressing itself because of the unbalance of, of, of the nutrients. Now we're actually going to dig up some roots and see if we can see any visual differences in growth of the roots between uh, proven and the untreated check. Well, you can see the tail of the two different soils here. We're actually just on a hill. When you get clay like this, it really wants to lock up a lot of your nutrients. Getting an auction to the soil is a huge key. You know, hence another reason why we're running so many different biologicals in front and things like that. We need to have oxygen into the soil. You know, another good sign if you see all these just earthworm holes everywhere through this clay. That's adding in nitrogen or not, not, it's adding in oxygen into there. More food for it. Places go down the channel. With every dirt, there comes problems and there's different obstacles to face. No matter what kind of dirt you're on, there's always going to be a different obstacle. So when we can start finding products that are going to work on multiple different soil types, that's what really gets my attention. Now we're gonna go check on the check field. There's gonna be soil differences. There's gonna be soil differences in that field. But at the end of the day, the soils are the same from field to field. It's just where they're gonna affect and hit are gonna be different. We ran it on three different soil types and we actually found that on one certain soil type that the proven really did a lot better. I mean, it really liked one soil type. So that was promising to see. When we do our uh, you know, yield analysis at the end of the year, the algorithm kind of breaks it out and it makes sure that the same amount of acres are covering the same amount of soil and so it's, a, a, mm -hmm. it's an even uh, analysis. We could have a whole episode on nothing but capturing data, how important it is. You know, last year we really started seeing the difference around that V3 yeah. time frame yeah. is when we was really seeing after that, the roots just kind of took off, grabbed the nutrients, and they all just started. But to see that big, you know, ball early, we was around that V2, V3. Now this corn here was planted at the end of April, I think April 25th, 26th. And it went through hell and back. Uh, you know, we thought, or I thought it was only gonna be cold for three days, so it'd been fine. Three days turn into 14 days, turn into frost. And then for five straight days, we recorded one GDU total in five days once it poked its head up out of the ground. Beans, not so worried about. Corn, that's a no-no. The sheer size of this corn plant right now is hiding a lot of the faults. So when you look across the field, it's not all level. And when you see that, I already know that's gonna take the top end of my of my field average off. You know, this field could have averaged over 300. It might be down to 280 or 270 now because of the variability, because of weather. You know, just walking out here in the field, you'll see a lot of un uneven spots. Uh, corn was really late to emerge, you know, and that's what you don't want with corn. So for as good as this looks right now, it's hiding a lot of early faults. And when you make a mistake with corn, 
There's no going back and fixing it. So now we're trying to clean all the equipment, get it put up, get it put away for the year. So first thing we did was bring it in here, replaced any bearings, grease it, anything that needed to be fixed, replaced. We did that and then we washed it, tractor and the cultivator, and now we're painting them. So we want to repaint all of our equipment to put it back new so rust is not going to sit there so it's still in good shape when we pull it out of the barn next year. This is what we use for planting. This is our 43 foot do it all from Sunflower. So we have three of these. And that's Poe getting after it with his brand new paint gun. Doing great, Poe. So we did another 10 inch plot this year. Uh, definitely turned out better. Uh, third year doing it. I think we're finally getting the hang of it. It's gonna be interesting to see how this turns out. It's got a brand new hybrid number in it. Uh, pretty excited for it. Uh, should turn out pretty well. It merged great this year. I had a good day today. Uh, we did a lot, We've seen a lot. Uh, thank you to Pivot Bio for coming out here today. Got to walk a lot of fields with them. Uh, we've got to see good corn, we've got to see bad corn, we've got to see early planted corn, we've got to see late planted corn. Hopefully everybody learned a little something today, but uh, I got to get going. My son's got baseball practice and uh, I got to get him to it. If anybody was on the fence about doing the advanced yield program, I'd say go for it if you're willing to go outside of your comfort zone. There's different things that he'll suggest, but they'll work for you. We're out today looking at a pivot bio field. We're looking at being able to cut back your synthetic nitrogen and being able to replace that in furrow with a micro. Where the starter washed out, the pivot bio corn is still green at the end of the year. Is it bad when the dogs can run through the contest field and not touch the corn? No, I think that means you're doing it right. Doing it right. Good. So we're gonna wade into this contest field. Uh, the first thing on our quest I have is we be real careful. We don't wanna damage any stalks. We're trying some new things. It looks like we're heel dropping corn. This planter setup is a, a design of mine, you can kind of tell. Let's look at this contest corn we got. This is some of our corn. I really don't want to dig any up because it might take away from the winning yield. We notice we have a wide middle here. That may stand for something, but I think it looks pretty good and it's going to eat really nice. We've wide dropped this once, sprayed it twice. It will definitely get Beltina. I don't know if the other will get it, but this will get it. <laughs> Brooks sells sweet corn for part of a living, right? I don't imagine that we're beating him here. But I'm definitely going to have to ship him some sweet corn. Say, so when you ever want to sell any really good sweet corn or taste any sweet corn, here you go. <laughs> so that's a good idea. So Brooks, look for it. Some sweet corn coming at you. So as you can see, this corn is pretty high already. But I'm curious, when did you plant this? Planted April the 6th. We'll look at a little bit of this corn here see what we think about it. It looks pretty good. I think it's it's really close to shooting a, mm -hmm. shooting a tassel out. But we look a lot at uh, when we're starting at the at these brace roots. We look mm -hmm. at these brace roots, we look at the spacing and see how it labels in. And that's just kind of where we build off of to see how good a job we've done with the planter. So, I mean, it don't look so bad to be the first trip down the field. Watch this shovel, all right? Look at that. So this is some of what we got going here. We always gotta have, you know, your big roots and your main roots, which are going down, but then you got all these hair roots that are pulling this, pulling new nutrients as well. So a good root system is, you know, like with anything else, is always a plus. 
we have pretty good luck with not having a lot of disease pressure early here. You know, I know it's in the south, you know, and we've cut up and joked about being southern and in the south and all. But we, the area that I'm in right here, I don't have a lot of disease pressure. It comes running in late. 99% of the time, we can wait till brown seal. You know, I know there's no problems with putting out Valtima at any time during the pollination period. Our joke is five feet high ready to apply. So as we can see, it's definitely past that point. I usually like to try to wait till brown silt because I know at that time I, don't, I can't affect anything for its pollination. You know, the, the one thing that worries me with the corn, you know, after you get the corn out of the ground, I get a sigh of relief. And when I get emergence and I got a good emergence, I got a sigh of relief. Because I get a second that I can kind of, you know, it's on its own, it's good, it's, it's, it's running. Okay, the next time is pollination. Mm -hmm. When I get through pollination, I'm on the back side then, you know. Right. But the pollination time is so critical down here because we don't know if we're gonna have 85 degree nights or 90 mm -hmm. degree nights, you know, and, and how warm or how hot or how sunny it's gonna be. As you said, there's not a lot of disease pressure here, but I'm sure it can definitely help out with the stressors that yes. come later on in the season, especially, yep. like you said, those really hot and then sometimes dropping temperature days. But the MEF and Triflaconazole is what really makes this so unique, not only to our existing products, but also our competitive products as well. And so a lot of times we'll hear the messaging that, oh, it'll protect you from root to tip or from, you know, through the entire leaf. But what we see with um, imaging and, you know, some heat treatments and pressure treatments or anything like that, we see that Yes, they'll start here and they will end up in the tip, but a lot of times what traditional products do is they'll move almost like a whole block, right? They'll just make their way through until they reach the tip. With this new ingredient and with the Revisol piece in it, what we've seen, it's more of a metered effect. So it slowly goes throughout the leaf, so you're still going to have coverage at that base while you're also protecting the tip of your plant. And that's going to help you keep it throughout the season. You won't have gaps, you won't have vulnerability to bigger disease pressures. Brentina, we really appreciate you coming out and spending some time with us today and explaining to me how fungicide works. I really appreciate that. To hear it helps me understand when to apply, how to apply, and what to see before I apply. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for All having right. me. Anytime, anytime. We got a lot of fibrous roots going on here, and it's got a it's got a real good root system. This. Um, this corn hadn't been, it, it went through a stress. And you know, sometimes, you know, we think about all the time that we don't want it to ever have a bad day. You know, you hear people say that. They don't ever want it to have a bad day. But sometimes I think in the, in the corn plant in certain areas, it helps for it to get a good root system. This was real good when it started, and then we went through a small dry spell. I think it helped a lot with the way the root structure is on it. It, it had a pretty good seed treatment on it, and um, proof's in the pudding, right? So now let's go out there and we're gonna go back and we're gonna replant this one. And we're gonna keep y'all posted on this. Next time they come, we're gonna show him this plant right here. This is the technique in it. Everything you plant is always about the care you take when you put it in. So, kinda like everything else we do, we're gonna take care of this baby. The rain's right on time. We're gonna wash this thing in. Good to go. Next week on Corn Warriors. Today's June 17th. We are We're trying to keep as much stress off the plant as we can, keep it cool. Bada bing, bada boom. Might not be a cob stand, but it's a pretty good stand.